Hey everyone, it's Finn here for the Magic Minds, and today I'm going to be talking about the top 5 most broken mechanics in Commander. Also, if you like our content and you want to see more, like always, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss any new episodes. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get right into the list. So, um, I didn't include keywords as mechanics here, I'm just including like the name mechanics that um, you see on the card, but they're not... Uh, keywords, so nothing like death touch, hexproof, you know, nothing, none of that stuff. Um, so let's get right into some honorable mentions before we get into our official list. So my first honorable mention is infect. So before I start talking about this, I just want to get this uh, clear. I really don't think infect is broken in commander. That's why it's not in the the top five list. I think it's very powerful. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think it's broken. So I know that's a topic of controversy among the community. And I personally side with it not being broken. Um, so, but with that said, it is also very powerful. So let's look at um, what Infect is. It says the creature that has Infect deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one, minus one counters and to players in the form of poison counters. So, um, for example, we got Blighted Agent. It's one in a blue for a creature human rogue, one, one, and it's unblockable. So... I should get this out of the way uh, before I talk about this. Uh, you need 10 poison counters to kill somebody. So it's like, basically, you only need to deal 10 infect damage and the person's dead. Now, normally in uh, formats with 20 life, that's not a big problem because uh, 20 life and 10 life, yes, the power is going to be basically doubled for uh, um, creatures with infect because they have to deal half the damage to kill a player. But that's not too big of a difference. But in Commander, when you have 40 life, um, that's f uh, four times um, the... Th it's kind of quadrupling the power of these creatures with Infect because they have to do a quarter of the amount of damage to kill somebody. So Blighted Agent here is a 1-1, one -one, but we can basically look at it as a 4-4 four because -four it only needs to hit somebody 10 times for them to die. So it really kind of like uh, really powers up um, a lot of creatures. Um, makes them a lot more powerful. And there's even some commanders that uh, are centered around, in fact, like Scytherix the Blight Dragon and stuff like that. Um, our next honorable mention is Partner. So Partner is one of those uh, mechanics that showed up in Commander 2016. And basically it means that... Um, I'm not talking about like the specific partner. I'm talking about like the general partner. Um, the first time we saw it. So uh, the you can have two commanders if they both have Partner. So if we look at um, Rayhan, Last of the Abzan... One, a black and a green for OO, legendary creature, human warrior, and as well, there are three plus encounters on it, and whenever a creature you control dies, or it's put into the uh, command zone, if it had one or more plus one plus encounters on it, you may put that many plus one encounters on target creature. So that basically means that um, we have Rayhan here. It's like kind of a standalone commander. It's not nothing too intuitive by itself, but you can choose from, I think there's, I'm not, don't quote me on this, but I think there's about 10 um, partners out there, so you can choose from like a ton of different options to completely customize how you want your deck to be built with all different sorts of commanders with different like archetypes and synergies and stuff. So you can really like pick and choose the exact type of commander you want for your deck. So that makes it super powerful um, when building a deck. And I think it's a really interesting and unique mechanic, but it's also that doesn't uh, mean it's not powerful. So it's yeah, it's really really powerful mechanic. I like the design, but it's also an honorable mention because of that. Um, our next honorable mention is Split Second. This is our last honorable mention. So Split Second, uh, if we look at a card like Crows and Grip, which is pretty popular, um, it says, as long as the spell is on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. So that basically means when you cast a spell, no one can respond to it, um, and nobody can cast spells to respond to it either, so you can't, like, counter it or anything. So it basically means it can't be countered, and it can't be responded to. So, this is really good, because, um, for example, with Cross and Grip, it's tuned to green for instant, got split second, and you can destroy target artifact or enchantment. So, you can take out somebody's sack outlet or something, before, and they can't sacrifice creatures in response. You can do all sorts of, like, um, really tricky stuff, um, and nobody, nobody can really uh, deal with it at all. So it's really nice um, in that aspect. So yeah, I, I just think that's really powerful. Not broken, but really powerful um, and enough to make it honorable mention just because it's, it's just so hard to respond to. It's basically untouchable um, when you're playing those cards. So 
that's why I think it's an honorable mention. Now let's get on to the top five list. All right, so coming in at number five, I'm going to be talking about Phyrexian Mana. So what Phyrexian Mana is, if we look at a card like Kirk, Kirk, not quite sure how to say it, but I'm just going to call it Kirk, Son of Yogmoth. It's four and then three Phyrexian Mana. So this is Phyrexian Black. So it can be paid with either two life or a black mana. Um, Crick has um, it's a horror minion, two two legendary creature, life link. Um, and then it's got some other text, but that doesn't really apply to what we're talking about right now. So, this, this mechanic is so powerful, it would, um, if this were, like, if we were talking about modern or another, like, limited format, um, this would probably be top of my list, because it's so powerful, but it's still powerful in Commander. Um, so, just use, being able to use your life as a resource, because... Um, in Commander, you have 40 life, and other formats, you have 20. So, being able to have double uh, the amount of life and basically double the amount of power on these cards, because um, you can pay more life without having to worry about it, um, it's just so good. Um, and it's cheating of mana cost, which is always going to be powerful. And so, having uh, just a way to, like... I mean, there's some cards that, like... Um, you can just play for free with Phyrexian Mana, like uh, Jutaxian Probe and all, all kinds of stuff. And so Phyrexian Mana just allows you to cheat mana cost. It's got good cards um, that have it, and it's just it's re just really good. Um, next up, at number four, we have Buyback. So this is, like, this is an older mechanic. So we're going to look at two cards today. Um, first one is Capsize. It's one blue-blue for instant. It's got Buyback 3, so you can pay an additional 3. As you cast it, if you do, you put this card into your hand as a resolve. So basically means you can just, um, rather than going to your graveyard, you can just have it to go to your hand. Um, so you'll still get the spell's effects. Um, and you also have it in your hands so you can play it again. And and in this case, Capsize says return target permanent to its owner's hand. So I think this is really good because basically it means you can pay a bit more for your spells. But you can just have them forever. And in Commander, a format where you can have a lot more mana... Um, I think having just, like, an access to basically an emblem where you can just, like, pay a certain amount of mana and do a certain thing, it's just crazy. Um, it's just like having, like, a permanent ability on the field that you can just use whenever you want. Like, just bounce a permanent for six mana if you pay the buyback cost. So, that's just crazy. Another one that's, uh, even more insane than Capsize is Sprout Swarm. It's, um, one in a green for a instant... It's got Convoke and Buyback, and you can put a 1-1 green sapling creature token into play. When I first saw this, I didn't think it was that good. Um, but when I now like looking at it again, I realized that can, you can con uh, Convoke and pay for the buyback cost. So, normally it costs 1 to green, but if you ha and it makes a token, but you can buy it back until you have enough um, tokens, just because you need 5 to pay for the buyback cost and the mana cost. You can just tap 5 to make another uh, sapling. Um, so if you have, um, enough creatures out, you can just start tapping your creatures and just playing it and buying it back for free. And that's just like that, like I said, with that just, like, um, permanent ability to just be able to, like, um, it's like an emblem. It's hard to remove, um, unless, like, like the counter spell or something because you can just keep doing it, keep getting it back, and it's just, like, unstoppable. So that's why I think, uh, buyback is such a good, um, mechanic. So that's why it's number four. Alright, so coming in at number three on this list is a pretty popular mechanic, one of my favorites, it's Overload. So if we look at one of the most popular cards, um, and most powerful cards in Commander right now, uh, Psychonic Rift, it's one to blue for an instant, you can return target non permanent to its owner's hand, but it's got Overload. So what Overload says is you can pay its Overload cost, which in this case for Psychonic, Psychonic Rift is six and a blue, and you may cast a spell for its overload cost. If you do, you change its text by replacing all instances of target with each. So, if we look at Psychonic Rift again, instead of putting target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand, you return each non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. So now, we have this huge versatility where you, it can either be a single target removal spell or just a uh, single-sided board wipe. Um, so I think that's just really crazy, being able to have that uh, amount of versatility and modes um, on s an already good card. And so we also look at Vandal Blast, one red mana source where you can destroy target artifact you don't control. It's also, also, also got Overload for four and a red. So then that means you can destroy all the artifacts you don't control. And uh, that's just insane. So 
just being able to have that option of being kind of a board wipe on any of these overload cards, like, um, it's, that's just crazy good, I think, in my opinion. So, I just, uh, I just really like this mechanic, and I think it's really powerful because it affects each opponent, it, or most of the time it affects each opponent, and, uh, it's, like, just got that mode there that can just make the card so much more powerful. So I really like that, and that's why it is number three. Alright, now we're on to our top two. So, number two, we have Delve. So, Delve, um, uh, means you can exile, um, a card from your, you can exile any number of cards from your graveyard, um, uh, when you cast it, and for each card exiled, it pays for one generic mana of that spell's mana cost. So if we look at Dig Through Time, which is a pretty popular one, it's six blue-blue for an instant. Look at the top seven cards of your library, put two of them into your hand, and the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Um, so on the surface, it looks pretty bad. Just eight mana, kind of get, like, two cards into your hand. But if we delve, which is, in most decks, you're usually going to have six cards in your graveyard at some point, and decks that can really use delve can... Um, self-mill themselves and all that good stuff. So if we delve, we can usually exile six cards. There's no, like, doesn't have to be creatures, doesn't have to be anything. Just any cards. Uh, and then we can cast a spell for blue-blue. So like I said with Phyrexian mana, um, cheating of mana cost is always really powerful, and a lot of these delve cards have powerful effects. We saw card advantage with the last one, Dig Through Time, and also Temporal Trespass, which is eight blue, 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 so 11 mana total. For a sorcery, it's got Delve, and you can take extra turn after this one, You can ex and you have to exile Temporal Trespass. Um, so with this, if you exile eight cards, it's just a three mana extra turn spell. So we can start getting like crazy powerful effects, like you know Time Walk and all sorts of stuff, with just having to exile some cards from our graveyard, which is not that hard for many decks. Another new card that I think is really powerful uh, it's Titan's Nest, so it's an enchantment, one, and soul tie, uh, at the end of your upkeep, you may look at the top card of your library, you may put, may put that card into your graveyard, and then you can exile a card from your graveyard, add, uh, colorless mana, spend this mana only to cast a colored spell without X minus mana cost. So, a little bit of restriction on what you can cast, but it basically gives all your spells a delve. That's just insane. Like I said, self mill decks just love this card, um, and just, like I said, cheating of mana cost, just so good, um, and just being able to cast spells for basically free or very low mana cost to get very good effects, um, yeah, so it's easy to set up, and it gives you a lot of good payoff, so that's why I think it's number two. All right, so we made it here. Finally, we're on to number one. So, number one for me, drum roll please, we have Eminence. Yes, Eminence. So, it's kind of a I'd say overlooked a bit, um, mechanic from C17, but looking back on it, I have no idea what they were doing designing this mechanic, it's just so insane. So if we look at one of the most popular, um, commanders, um, in the recent years, and the most popular Mardu commander, it's Edgar Markov, uh, he's three, red, white, black, legendary creature, vampire knight, four, four, first strike haste, Whenever he attacks, you can put a plus encounter on each vampire you control. So that's already a pretty good command right there. But they decided to give him Eminence, so whenever you cast another vampire spell, if Edgar Mankov is on the battlefield or in the command zone, just in case you uh, forgot, the commanders start in the command zone. So that's basically forever. You're going to have that ability. Um, you can make a 1-1 vampire whenever you cast um, the vampire spell. So, uh, yeah. So you just get a free ability whenever you want. You don't. You don't even have to cast your commander. Like this is this is better than having a zero mana commander with the first ability. Like you can't even remove it. It's just in the command zone. Like it's just crazy. Like sometimes it's just better to leave your commander in the command zone. Nobody can remove it. You just have that free effect. It's like starting the game with like a good emblem. Like that commander is. That's a good ability. That just pumps out a huge. It's. I, I don't know, man. It's just. It's just crazy, like, if you think about it, it's just like, you start the game with an emblem, if you choose that commander. Another another one that um, they printed, luckily they're all tribal, so they're not, like, too broken, but still, like, having this for your tribal deck, um, like the Ur-Dragon, um, it's four on Wurberg, nine mana, ten, ten, um, it's flying whenever more, one or more dragons you control attack, draw them any cards, you can put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield, so you know... 
if you can spend 9 mana on it, then good for you, you do that. But it's also got eminence, it just makes all your dragons cost one less to cast. Like, that's already insane, that's already half an Ur uh, Urza's incubator, and just for free. Emblem, unremovable. No, no work needed besides choosing that as your commander. It's just insane, man. They also, I think they printed five total. They had Inala, um, they had a Cat one, a Rabo, I believe, and I think they had one more. Yeah, so it was just, um, insane mechanic. I don't, do not know what they were thinking there. Like, I just don't get it, man. It's just a free emblem. You can see, I'm just in disbelief just looking at, back at this mechanic, because it's just, it's just so good. So yeah, that's why it's number one. Definitely, I'd say, the most powerful mechanic um, in EDH so far. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for this video. If I missed any mechanics, please tell me in the comments. Uh, and if you like these top five videos, maybe um, say if you liked them or not in the comments, and I'll try to do more of them. But yeah, thanks for watching, and as always, keep magic on your mind.